uh, on schedule. So let me just um, back up here with the slides. I can do that. Okay, there we are. So obviously today is uh, May 11th is our second get together of this group. Um, here's the agenda for tonight. As I said, we're gonna just simply uh, make sure we're all progressing along uh, on the overall project. Talk a little bit about uh, the remaining schedule and the uh, meeting dates. Uh, our next meeting uh, we've scheduled for June 8th and then we'll leave time uh, at the end for uh, any questions that anyone might have. So just a quick summary of the project uh, that we're talking about. Um, we're expanding the Heritage Walk. Ultimately, we're going to be creating five new interpretive exhibits uh, in Old Weathersfield uh, at three different sites, Trinity Parish, the Wood Parcel, and uh, at the intersection of Main and Church Street for a business directory uh, sign. Um, I'll just start with uh, an update uh, of the sign that's going to be at the location uh, on Main Street and uh, Church Street. Um, Phil Lohman has pretty much designed the sign. I know he has been sharing it uh, on weekends as part of the Bicycles on uh, Main event uh, to get some feedback uh, from the community just to see what additional changes there have been a number of new businesses that we need to add ultimately to the map and to the uh, directory. I don't think Phil uh, was able to join us. Phil, I didn't see you and I don't think I checked you in. If you are out there, by all means, uh, jump in there. But Phil has been just looking to get some feedback uh, from the community as the final details of that sign uh, will be will be done. I think we're going to wait as long as we can towards the end of the project to make sure the business directory is as uh, timely and as updated uh, as it can be. So uh, I know we've got actually four or five new businesses that uh, have come in or are likely to come in before uh, the project and the signs get printed. So as I say, uh, we're going to hold off on uh, those final details until we get closer to the end of the project. Uh, I don't know if anyone has had a chance to see, I think we shared it on the screen at the last meeting, but I don't know if anyone has had a chance to see uh, the larger printed version uh, of Phil's map, um, but uh, we're happy to continue to share that as the, as the project goes forward. Does anyone have any questions on that particular exhibit? Okay, very well, Ollie, we'll move on. Um, Tina, did you wanna give everyone an update on uh, the progress uh, that you're making with, uh, with the Trinity exhibit? Sure. Um, we've met a couple of times and um, Linda's the only other person here I was expecting Rose Riley to. Um, we came up with a grabber line um, and several themes and uh, a bunch of pictures and I made the pictures available if you'd like to see them I could share the screen and show you what we've sure yeah let me uh, let me make you a um, let me see if I can make you a co-host here okay Thank you. Okay, give uh, give that a, give that a shot. See if that works. Okay. And then we pick this. Yeah. Can you see that? Yes. Yeah. So yeah. We. Can. We thought this would be our compelling photo. It's the Tiffany stained glass cross. Um, and uh, this is a photo that one of our members had taken of it a while ago. Um, nice. this, is, this one we're not sure about whether it to include, but it is a picture of the brownstone quarries. It's in Portland. In Portland, <laughs> Connecticut with uh, about the time that they got the brownstone for the church 
And that's about how they transported it to the church up the river. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. And then we talked about like having a smaller uh, picture possibly with a caption of our logo. This is no longer the logo of Connecticut, but it's still the logo of the, it seems to be still the logo of the um, uh, National Episcopal Church. I know Linda probably knows this stuff. Um, and then in, just like about seven years ago, Connecticut adopted this logo and they all kind of go back to the Scottish uh, influence on the Episcopal Church in the United States, especially Connecticut. So those would be like possibly smaller items. Okay. This is one photo of the interior. We don't know if we'd want a bigger photo or I mean, not a bigger one, a more current photo. Um, but as an alternative, we've also had this drawing which could kind of give us a kind of a different texture look, which is this one. And it's decorated for Christmas and um, the same blue roof and just an option. But we, we figured we should maybe have an interior photo of some sort and these are options. This is a um, picture of the church that we didn't discuss at our meeting, Linda, but um, this was something that highlighted the tiles on the roof better than the picture we had agreed on at the meeting. Mm -hmm. So that's why I have this here. It's from 1903. And those tiles are so distinctive, especially if you look at them in color, that's why I, um, included this as a possibility. Um, this is the one we had selected at our meeting when we got together. Um, there's definitely no ivy, so it's better view of the stained glass windows. Um, it's about, I don't know, it must be a little bit of a different time frame because there's this fence in front but I don't know this is Gilly gave me this one but the um tiled roof is just not as outlined as dramatically if we chose this one I thought maybe we could possibly have for example a smaller portion of a cropped version of this next photo like this is a current version you have to get rid of the wire um, cause it's, it's like 1970s, but it does show the tile. I don't know. I just thought it was beautiful. Um, I just, um, put this in here because it's from the cult. Um, it's the parish house. I think at cult, the same architect. And I, I, we didn't talk about this, but I just stuck it in here. But this is the mother church of uh, the Church of the Good Shepherd, same architect in Hartford, who, and they're the people who helped us get started. So whether or not this would get included, I don't, we haven't discussed, but I just wanted to include it because it's so much more magnificent and- Got the fancy roof. A fancy roof yes. and <laughs> possibly relevant to us. I don't know, maybe a smaller version of it. Yep. And then this here is 1954 um, photo laying of the cornerstone of the addition to the church, which um, is not shown in the other photos of the church. And this is, um, if you don't mind me saying, Linda. Oh, that's fine. <laughs> this is Linda Blessing's father, who was the Reverend, Reverend Finlay for many years uh, at the church, and he oversaw the um, completion of the expansion of the church as it is now. And this is just something Gilly sent me that I just thought it was kind of interesting. This was about the 1874 or whenever, when the cornerstone 71. of 
1871 when the first cornerstone was laid. And I don't know whether like a small version of that is worth in, you know, including, but I just found so many things interesting that I thought I would show them all to you. Great. And that's it. Great. Looks like you get some uh, nice, um, <laughs> nice choices, nice options to, to pick from, which is always a nice problem to have. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah, we'll have to decide. Great. Okay. okay. Yeah, the, the more the better. That's great. Mm -hmm. yeah. How about the, uh, have you started to write or you just uh, been, been uh, developing the imagery? Um, we talked about, uh, we did start to write. I thought that we were getting ahead of ourselves. Um, and, um, Honestly, I had some surgery, so I haven't even read what um, Kathy Cole wrote, Linda, um, mm -hmm. to, to um, make it shorter, what you had written. Um, but we have discussed the themes of like the history of the church, um, such as the role of the good sh Church of the Good Shepherds, helping us start up, being instrumental. Um, the use of the old academy, um, the community connections, such as the use of the VFW house across the street for, I don't know, ladies guild meetings and Sunday school. And um, there were two houses in town that are historic houses that were used as rectories. And there's a lot of history about that. Um, and also just the architecture because the stained glass is fabulous and the, um, the architect was so famous having done the Church of the Good Shepherd, having done the Mark Twain house, having done many things in New York and, um, and also the use of the Portland Brownstone. And the fact that both the Portland Brownstone quarry is a national historic site as well as the cult. Um, well, the Church of the Good Shepherd is um, within the Colt National Historic Site. I thought it might be worth mentioning, but tying all that in. Okay. So um, you might want to send to David Wolfram uh, some of the imagery so he can take a peek at the quality. Um, you know, there's certain, because we're going to blow these up to a sort of a larger scale than the, the photos yeah. probably exist today, uh, he, he'll probably want to take a peek at that. So, so the higher resolution uh, imagery you can get, the, the better off the final version okay. will be. So uh, I'll, I'll pass on, as we go through the presentations, we'll pass on and give everybody uh, that contact information so that you can start, you can start that process. Thank and you. As you. And if you find more imagery, obviously just um, keep sending them his way and okay. we'll ultimately piece it all together. Okay, thank you. Okay, get back to the uh, presentation here. Okay. Um, did, I, did I tell you our grabber line? I forgot. No, I, you didn't. You didn't share it with us, unless um, you're keeping you're keeping it a secret to the end, maybe. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, Rose Riley had found a. Uh, um, architectural planning and on it the, the drawings was a building with faith in for the future for the future yeah and so that was what we thought would be our grabber one great great good like you've made some some, uh, some good progress then so excellent keep up the good work thank you Okay, let's uh, move on. Uh, Jim is with us to talk about uh, the wood parcel and uh, where where you guys are at. Obviously, you have uh, several uh, panels uh, to fill and to design, so you've got uh, a bigger task ahead of you. But uh, why don't uh, Jim, you can jump right in here and share with us where where you're at in the process? Yeah, 
I wish I were able to share some of the images because we do have a bunch of good images. Yeah, um, uh, Jim, I can, um, we could share them and I can click through them if you want to describe them. I have them on Tina's computer. Oh, here. okay. Well, that sounds good, yeah. So if you could just let us share again, I guess. Yeah, uh, yeah. We, we can, okay. I, there may be a couple that don't belong in that folder, but uh, okay. if I'm. I think you should be able to do that now. All right. Let's see. So this is a photo. What? So that would be on the uh, the second sign for the elm restoration project, and uh, that's the planting of one of the elm trees. Um, <clears throat> we're probably looking for one more of the second group of plantings that we had with many people. Um, and there's, we want to tie it in with the great elm. So we have photographs of the great elm, a couple of photographs of the great elm that we'd like to add in. Um, this is jumping back to the sign number one. At the Sorry, street. yeah, apologize. They're, they're not in, they're sorted by whatever random file names they have at this point. Oh uh, yeah, well. But um, do you want me to just click through and you did you say when to stop, Jim, and then we'll describe them in order, kind of? All right. Well, let's start with this one, and then find, if if you've got the other house picture, I do. I think it's, yeah. Yeah, that would be the next one. So this shows uh, the the house that was standing here, uh, built by the Robbins family, and Gilly's going to find out who the original one was. But it was in the Robbins family all the way through until Sarah Wood bought it in the 50s. Sarah Wood's family bought it in the 50s. Um, and uh, this, this photograph's from 1936 when the water was rising in the great flood of 36. At 22 feet, it went up to 37 feet. So whatever we can squeeze in to say about it, it talks about the floodplain and also the history. Uh, going back. And then, of course, Sarah, would, go to the next slide, uh, the next uh, house picture, if you can. That's the Great Elm. Yeah, the Great Elm. Great Elm, Great Elm. Let's see. I... There's Sarah. Is there, that the one? Okay. Yeah, so in this, this is the same house, but when Sarah Wood was living there, and that's her family uh, sitting under the big tree. This may be the one that we want to have the largest the dominant one. And uh, interestingly, the flood, that flood picture, my grandfather took two pictures that match up. One of them shows the, was the one that you just saw. Um, and then parallel with that is one that uh, shows the houses are still standing. Um, so part of the story is the Robbins family for 200 years, still in the family, bought by Sarah Wood, one of the first African-Americans in, in Wethersfield, African-American families in Wethersfield. Uh, and then 10 years later, the highway comes through and they demolish this house. Uh, and supposedly the highway, half of this house is under the highway and the other half might be the hole in the ground that you can see when you walk around the uh, path. Um, <clears throat> we were talking about trying to find a, an aerial photo from the past that kind of we could overlay on top of this, just show where the highway is in relation to this exactly. Yeah. What, with, what, what year were you looking to find the aerial photo from? Maybe the 40s or 50s, Jim, do you think? You yeah. Look I mean, in the 30s, it had too much tree cover. That's true. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, that's I, I've looked at 34, and I don't think I could see anything, and I don't think the resolution of what I was looking at was good enough to really get down and, and see the details. Um, but yeah, that would be that would be okay. helpful. There might um, there, there might be plans from when the when the highway, you know, was being designed and showing the existing conditions that existed at that time. Oh, that so, would, yeah, that would be interesting. Where would you find that? Do you think the town hall would have that? 
we might sure. have them in the engineering uh, office. I can. Um, I made a note to uh, to check. Um, oh, great! Yeah, that would have been the re Route Three project, right? Or right? Yeah, Route Three from Maple Street to Elm Street. Okay. I mean, so I'm sorry from Middle Maple Street, Middletown Avenue to Elm Street. Right. Yeah, that's right. It is. Maple um, so then. Uh, in 2000 is when the Great Meadows Trust purchased the house or purchased the lot that was left over from the highway taking some of the acreage, taking some of the Robbins farm. Um, and uh, so one of the dominant, you know, one of the things that, that will be there is the, a, a, uh, at least an excerpt from the mission statement of the Great Meadows Trust which is to preserve the Great Meadows and its architectural, uh, archeological, it's archeological and uh, floodplain and uh, all, all the different qualities of wildlife and so forth, which is this parcel kind of exemplifies everything. Um, and uh, so put that in, uh, talk about the trust buying it, preserving it. We may have something by, uh, parallel to building with faith for the future in terms of uh, uh, preserving uh, in perpetuity. Uh, yeah. Anyway, um, <laughs> yeah. So we're, but we're, I was, the, my last thought, I'm sorry, Phil's not here. We, I took Phil over there to look at it. I was thinking of a map on the third sign, which looks out on the marsh. Uh, so you can kind of identify what you're seeing. Uh, but then I realized maybe a small map on each of, to tie all three signs together. Um, probably a drawing, map drawing of, of Phil's perhaps. I mean, we, we drew one that, that shows you how to get there and small detail of the, tra the trail and other things like that. But if we, uh, we had like three variations that are related and show the details of you know where the next sign is and and so forth and some of the other things that would be probably some of the things that are perhaps where the house was as part of the trail or the uh, I don't know we have yeah. to work on that yep <laughs> let's see do you want to talk about the the elm tree stuff yeah yeah actually uh well, yeah. this is kind of a neat photo, which would, could fit as an inset on, on part of a, on a larger photo of the larger elm, perhaps. Um, and the narrative would be of, of what happened to elm trees and, and uh, from the Dutch elm disease, and then trying to breed disease tolerant elms, and now the restoration project where, <clears throat> And that's why there's some logos that went by, mainly the Nature Conservancy. And we have to run this sign by the Nature Conservancy before we finalize it. And it would also have the logos of the uh, National uh, uh, the Forest and um, the, whatever is it, Forest, <laughs> the Forest Service and the, and the uh, Fish and Wildlife Service. I guess all three of those logos are part of that because their funding, I think, the grant that that gave us those elm trees and, and uh, showed us where to plant it. So that's a, that's a big part of this picture. I don't know if we have time to talk about other disasters like the ash tree. Um, I was just reading how they really have come up with uh, disease resistant uh, chestnut trees and it's time to start a restoration project similar to this. So I'd love to have some of those. It won't be part of this sign, I guess, too late. That's but, the next uh, sign. <laughs> yeah, the next one. But anyway, so that's, and that would be, the, the first sign would be just as you come in off the street at the entrance. Uh, and then the elm tree sign would be uh, up at the end of the little parking lot <clears throat> um, where there's an elm tree. There's elm trees kind of all the way around the, uh, the open space there, uh, but there'll be one one at that entrance. And what other details about the different, there's five different cultivars 
uh, with just different descriptions and you know whether that would make make it into the uh, thing or not, but it's a possibility. Okay. And then moving on to the third sign, which would be all the way out. Um, so you're sitting, you can sit, I don't know, and you're looking out on the marsh and behind you is the floodplain forest and not too far away is the pond with all the turtles in it and uh, various kinds of, so you have marsh. <clears throat> and then just beyond that is the, the agriculture of farmland, the Great Plain. Um, and so the Great Plain had been farmed going back centuries by Native Americans, and uh, now it's being farmed. <clears throat> and then there's all the wildlife and the native plants and so forth. And I want to have some photographs of that, some photographs of the Native American artifacts to kind of place that in, in, in time, I guess, and uh, native plants and so forth. Yeah, I don't think I have those artifact pictures that you shared in this. I might, yeah, that's all. I mean, there. So I I took pictures from Frank Winiarski's uh, brought over his sort of little display cases, and I probably want to pick out one, you know, one uh, bifurcated spear point or whatever it is, and uh, that could be six thousand BC and some of the more contemporary ones and, and uh, kind of put those into perspective, but just one of each, I may have to get, uh, take some new pictures of those, <clears throat> figure out how to do that. Um, I think that might be about all the pictures that we have at the minute that I can share. I we've got a few others, but yeah. anything to say, that's a neat picture though. It's a, that's a, that's my grandfather on the left from the, I don't know, twenties maybe something like that. Is that the uh, great? Is that the great elm too? So that's the great elm. Five guys lined up in front of it. Um, One big tree. Yeah. Right. Not yeah. It was on the green. Some speculation it might be four trees melded together, but I don't know. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. Let's see. I think, I think that's probably it. Let me just zip through real quick, sorry. These are just some of the existing plaques. And yeah, just to, to kind of tie into stuff. the Native American stuff. And there's a fish and wildlife and a wildlife refuge system and so forth. Yeah. Um, and Sarah Wood, that's probably the best picture we have. I don't know how, well, that would be small, I guess. So you wouldn't have to expand it too much. Huh? Right. Is uh, 300, 300 dots per inch good enough, or do you need something that's? Uh, no, that's perfect. Is that good enough? Yeah. 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 Some of these things, I just, I just use Photoshop to ramp it up a little bit to three hundred dots. But uh, you know, we'll have. I'll send you the stuff. I also have, have. I also have software that'll do that. Um, yeah. It's it's a, uh, it's a, a plugin for for Photoshop that. Uh, can increase the resolution and the size. That's great. So sometimes, yeah. sometimes if I need something, let's like say 400%, I'll increase it to 500% and then reduce it down. And that kind of sharpens everything up too. So. Oh, interesting. Yeah. It's, it's pretty, it's pretty decent software. It, it can do a lot. Yeah. Good. Do you, uh, do you use InDesign? Yes. So I do too. So I might, if you sent me a, a template or something, I could put, kind of put some stuff in just to just to get a sense, and then send that to you, and you could throw it out or whatever, but and <laughs> do your own stuff. But sure, sure. Once uh, I get working on it, I'll definitely will. Yeah, that'd be great. You re re remind me when we get to that stage when you submit your stuff. I'll I'll do that. Yeah. Well, maybe I'll I'll start sending you photos yeah. and stuff. Okay. At some early point, but that sounds good. Yeah. Okay. Just, okay. Just a reminder: when you do say send David the imagery, the more um, uh, attributes, details of each of the images you can send to him. You know, if you have dates, if you have, you know, who who the, who credit should be given to. If you got the image from the historical society, 
Um, if you got right. it from some, some other archive, the more detail you can give to David so that we make sure we don't lose that in, um, in translation as, right. as, as we go forward. So when you do send them something, if there is a date, if it isn't, if you don't know it, maybe we need to research some of those things, but the more details, uh, the better off we'll be. Right. And we, when we pick the photos too, you'll probably want uh, short captions about each one to identify them to the people who are looking. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Yeah. Sounds good. Yeah. I, lo I love that uh, horizontal picture of the reflections, uh, the, the flood. That was a great picture. Yeah. And, you know, and it matches up because the two elm trees, the elm tree on the left in that picture matches up with the elm tree on the right. And so all the houses that are still there mm -hmm. on Warner Place are, are mirrored and, and past lives. So I'll send you both of those pictures and, okay. and my combination, but you could, I don't know if, you know, that maybe that would be kind of a, uh, uh, across the top or something and sort of fade out or I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that, that could be very graphic and, you know, maybe it's a, like you said, a faded image behind something. Yeah. 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 It's really great. Actually, I wish I could figure out the wish I could figure out the exact perspective that he where he stood when he took those pictures uh -huh. because because there's a the there's a a windmill in the picture yeah it looks like it's right back behind the corner of the house but when you get up there you can see where the well was and the house has to be 50 60 feet away so it has mm -hmm. to, Looks like anyway, it's just a difficult thing. But maybe once we find the um, the layout, we can yeah. figure out figure out the perspective. So yeah, yeah. Okay. Anything else, Jim? You want to report? I don't think so. I think that's all I got so far. Okay. Uh, just so everybody knows, there's a, a study being done on on this parcel by the. Uh, state environmental review team. Uh, they've got different specialists who are going to come in and kind of analyze the conditions of the property, the history, and, and such. Jim, any idea when that report might be delivered to you? That I think that's going to be invaluable. Yeah, I know. It's it's. Uh, uh, Pete, didn't they say April or something like that? I think April, I but it didn't happen. So one, we have yeah. one. One report, but none of the others. Okay. Right, it's the whole team, so they need to each put in their pieces, and then the, I don't know yeah. who assembles it all. Right. Yeah. Well, Gene Davies probably does, but okay. Okay. But yeah. um, you know, we, the uh, the state uh, archaeological expert has not visited yet. So oh, okay. All right. That's one of the key key pieces there. Definitely. Okay. Well, that might explain it then. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That would explain it. Yeah. All right. Um, well, let's move on. Here's here's where we are in the schedule. Uh, obviously, we're still in phase one, but uh, at this point in the schedule, we uh, it's probably time to start writing and thinking about the layout uh, of your panels, as as Jim was um, mentioning. Um, he's already starting to think about uh, that. So. Uh, now would be the time to really start to get into some of that uh, detail, start sketching, uh, sketching it out so that we can, yeah. we can. Peter, do you have a schedule? schedule? You didn't, you're not sharing with us. If oh. you have a schedule. Yeah. Oh, this is, the screen isn't sharing. What, what are you guys seeing on your screen? We're seeing you. <laughs> well, we're just okay. seeing uh, yeah, well, well, that's not good. Let me, um, let me end the show here and see if we can get back here what are you saying now you no, no. whoever is talking that we're seeing i guess yeah all right let me see if we can i'm see seeing linda that. right now right i'm seeing you <laughs> <laughs> that's if you have it on speaker view if you have it on gallery view the speaker just gets a yellow border yeah let's um see if we can get back well i'm looking on my phone so i don't have much there in my my computer died so okay do you think any, what are you saying now same thing same you thing. just you okay no just you yeah 
Well, we're seeing everybody on ours, but uh, let's try this one more. Time. All right. Well, it's probably not um, not that critical that you see the slides. I can just kind of walk through them. So, uh, in terms of schedule, as I was saying, um, right about now in the schedule, um, you guys are. Uh, highlighted to start laying out and start drafting up uh, the individual uh, panel. So I see um, you're, you're both starting to uh, do that. So keep up, keep up that work. Um, we are still on, on, still on schedule. So um, let me see. So just a, a reminder of what the discussion we had last time about what the uh, criteria are for uh, making a good exhibit. So uh, we stress the fact that uh, try and use uh, as many graphic images uh, as you can. It looks like you're getting a good head start on that. As David mentioned, um, 300 DPI is what we're, we're shooting for, David? Yeah, that's the best. Okay. Uh, I think the uh, panel's not printed that high, but that gives me some latitude to enlarge. I think um, it might be a 200 DPI panel, but um, like I said, that gives me a, some some enlargement without having to use the software. Okay. Um, so you know, we don't want to make these too wordy. Some of the panels that we did in the first heritage walk, we were accused of uh, having too much narrative and not enough graphics. Obviously, it depends on the subject matter and what you can incorporate for graphics versus narrative. But I think my notes indicate that try and shoot for a 400 word panel. I mean, that's not set in stone. And some of the themes and some of the stories that you have to tell may uh, require more or may require less, but a general rule of thumb is try and shoot for 400 words. Uh, we talked about the compelling title and it looks like both of you guys have a, a good start at uh, a grabber uh, headline that might get people uh, pretty uh, interested in, in reading further on. Um, the historical graphics are great um, so that people can see what existed here in the past that they might not you know, be uh, able to see today. So it uh, looks like you've made a good, good start on that. Um, and obviously, and probably going to be more challenging for the wood parcel uh, layout, but we want to make sure that we can um, make these uh, as uh, ADA accessible uh, as we can. Jim, I, do you have a, what do you have for paths down there? Do you have gravel paths? Do you yeah, have so, so we, we've been striving for a couple of years now to, to I think the way they, des they describe it is to, is to build the path up to um, accessibility guidelines or something like that. And so some of the mushier parts, we really have put in some stone and gravel and the other parts are, uh, a hard packed and uh, the other standard is not to have anything sticking up like a root or a rock more than two inches or something like that so and that that also you know made it clear okay this sign has to go here and can't go somewhere else and so i think we're i think we're in good shape one of my goals is to is to expand that and do more but i think these signs uh, are are going to be you know fine on that on that score Okay, and I think obviously the Trinity Trinity location is probably pretty self-evident. You've got sidewalk there. You've got some green spots. So um, start thinking about where uh, you want to um, you know, place your sign as well. So uh, so it sounds like we won't have problems uh, okay. w with any of that. So okay, Peter, um, how big? What are the dimensions of the sign? Do you know, can you tell us? Yeah, I'm trying to remember now. They are, they're an odd number. Um, let's see. They're roughly, I think, two by three. They might be a little bit smaller than that. They might be 34 by 22, but. Um, if David, I can measure one, we're right there by. Uh, is it going to be the same as the current yes, one? Yes. Okay. They, will, they will be exactly the same. Okay, thank you. Okay. And if you need, uh, I've got paper copies of some of them. So if it 
if that helps, you can, you know, I can print out some of the um, ones that are already in place and uh, that might also give you a sense of layout and things like that. So if you need that, let me know and I'll be happy to pr print them out for, for both of you just to give you a, 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 you know, to put a hands-on feel to it. Thank you. Okay. Um, obviously, um, David is here um, to assist um, as you start grabbing images and things like that. So as they say, uh, don't uh, uh, hesitate to avail yourself of communicating with David. Let me give everybody uh, David's or David, if you want to share your contact information um, and the best way for folks to, to get a hold of you. Sure. Um, I guess email is going to be the, the best way. Um, uh, it's D. Wolfram, my last name, at snet.net. Um, you probably, I don't, did you send out uh, some contact information at the beginning or I'm not sure, Peter, that, if you did. Yeah, there's an I'll email chain for all the meetings that you can look at. So, yeah. D. D. Wolfram at snet.net. Yeah, snet.net. And, and Dave, you're on the, you're on the distribution list, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Okay. Also, um, I, I, I give you my cell phone number too. If um, if sometimes if I'm busy, I don't uh, look at my email every day. If it's urgent, you need to text me. Um, I can I can give you that too if you like. Sure. Once you put it out there. Yeah. So that would be yeah, um, be yeah. That would be eight six zero four two four six three two four. David, can you say that one more time? I think we... Um... Yeah, that 860-424-6324. Thank you. And then uh, obviously the Weatherfield Historical Society has graciously agreed to help us. Um, Gilly is, uh, is with us. Gilly, if you want to uh, share your contact information, and it sounds like uh, folks have already taken uh, advantage of... Uh, yeah, your, it's been your very help. helpful. Yeah. Very helpful. So if you want to jump in here and share your contact, that'd be great. Yeah, so the best way to reach me is via email. And I think you guys already have my email. It's william.johnson at weathersfieldhistory.org. Very good. Okay. So let's move on to future meeting schedules. Uh, as I said at the beginning, this is our second meeting. Uh, looks like we're probably gonna have four or five meetings just to make sure we're uh, on track. So our next meeting will be, will be June 8th. So there's a relatively quick uh, turnaround on our next meeting. The meeting after that will be July 13th. And then our last meeting, obviously, before um, before we have the panels finally designed, would be August 10th, uh, with the general idea that by August 15th, we will have everything finalized and ready to be sent out for production. So June 8th, July 13th, and then August 10th, uh, they're all Tuesdays, I believe, and we would also stick to the 6.30 start time. And then lastly, before we wrap up, does anyone have any general questions or uh, comments or observations for the good of um, everybody else uh, before we um, wrap up? And then one more plug, just uh, continue to keep track of your time as you as you and your volunteers help with the project. Uh, we have a certain number of volunteer hours we have to commit to the project. So anytime uh, you're thinking about this, working on this, attending meetings, please jot down a little note. I think I had provided uh, timesheet forms uh, early on. So use those and just plug in your dates and what you were working on and we'll collect those uh, as we go forward with the project.
any questions, things people are wondering about or things we need to talk further about before we wrap up? Okay. Very good. Then uh, I will uh, we'll end the meeting at this point. Uh, we'll see you again uh, at June 8th. Obviously, we'll send out uh, the Zoom uh, invitations for that meeting. And uh, good luck and uh, keep uh, plugging away on your panels. And I uh, look forward to maybe at the next meeting seeing uh, maybe some preliminary, preliminary narratives and, and some layouts. Sounds right. good. Okay. Sounds good. Okay, Thank guys. you. Thanks for your time tonight. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Bye. Good night. Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye. Good night.